it was Egypt, it is Libya, and now it's Yemen. Protesters stormed the U.S. Embassy in Yemen. Demonstrations about an anti-Muslim bill are spreading across the region. Security forces have had to open fire in the compound. As the compound in Sana, the capital, was attacked by hundreds of protesters. What we are going to put on air in just a moment for you is the attack in Benghazi, the targeting of the U.S. Embassy in Cairo, and also this latest attack that's taking place even as we speak at the U.S. Embassy in Sana'a in Yemen. Initially it was said that the protest was spontaneous but now many are saying that these protests are very carefully orchestrated. U.S. counter-terrorism officials, especially talking about the Benghazi violence, especially about the attack that killed the U.S. Ambassador, Chris Stevens, they are saying that that was too well coordinated. It was far too professional to be a spontaneous attack. Protesters who are angry about a movie do not move around with rocket propelled grenades, bombs and small arms fire. And noted expert of the region, Saeed Nakwi, now joins me for more on this. Mr. Nakwi, what do you make of a series of these attacks now, uh, these protests, first in Cairo, then in Benghazi, now in Sana'a? Well, uh, look, the ignition, point of ignition is obviously the 11th anniversary of 9-11, during which some mischievous uh, film was put onto on your YouTube and this obviously was done with very malicious intent. Whoever did it has been very successful in igniting this fire across uh, the entire Arab world and it will grow. Is the lesson that we must learn is that the first lesson that the Americans in Benghazi, it was absolute failure of um, security. It is how easily we delude ourselves and we become victims of our own propaganda. That somehow we have liberated and therefore we are going to be liked. The facts are, facts are quite contrary. People don't like you. And you became lax and therefore, unfortunately, a very young diplomatic life was lost. Now this prairie fire, if there is rampaging anti-American and all over that part of the world. This people do not realize because they, again as I said, people begin to be exposed to their own propaganda yeah. through their media which they begin to give great credence to. And heaven knows where this is going to stop. Okay, you fear this could perhaps further spread, this fire could, could further spread. Stay on with me, Mr. Nakwi. Let me also bring in Naresh Chandra, former Indian ambassador to the United States. Mr. Chandra, did the Americans read this situation completely wrong last year? And now they're paying a price for it, that Arab Spring, they, they, without completely understanding what was happening, they unleashed a monster. Uh, no, I don't think the cause of Arab Spring can be laid at America's door. That would be uh, underestimating the surge of public opinion which developed from uh, Tunisia to Libya and then to Egypt. Uh, there is definitely an internal movement for reform. What has happened is that uh, Western powers first in Libya from Europe and then U.S. joined hands, they thought it's a good opportunity to get rid of uh, certain governments they were allergic to. Without not having an alternate in place? Well, you know, the, it's not that America is in charge and managing director of the whole world. They inherit a situation and then they react to it uh, as they think is in their best interest. We should not assume a position as if America is managing the whole world. So they responded in a certain way 
actually the consequences cannot all be anticipated there are unintended consequences the problem is that there is a great uh, upsurge of uh, uh, recourse to earlier uh, thesis and orthodoxy and a great passion for the islamic way of life it's a given and when america is seen siding with government or pursuing policies which run counter to the local people's wishes resentment is a consequence